Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video I want to talk about the process of creating black and white images and in this case this will be done purely by using the camera raw editor which also means all those things I'm doing here can be done in Adobe Lightroom Classic as well. It just looks a little bit different due to a different user interface. So without much more talking let's start with the tutorial. First off, why do I choose to apply a black and white effect on this image? Well, the midday light isn't exactly nice for landscape photography. We do have a lot of contrast with harsh shadows and bright highlights. Because of that contrast, the black and white image will get much, much more interesting. So how do we create a black and white image? As usual, there are many ways to do that. For example, we could just push the saturation slider all the way to the left and we get a black and white image. But you could also just click on that button in the upper right corner, which says black and white, and you get pretty much the same effect. Now, you might think, since we have chosen a black and white image, the white balance doesn't change this image. But that's wrong. Just look what happens when I'm playing around with the temperature. It kind of feels like a polarization effect. And in this case, I'm looking for the point with the darkest sky, since I want to have a lot of contrast going on here. And I guess that's somewhere around here. So let's leave it at that point. Then let's work on the contrast a little bit. First off, however, I want to drop the highlights all the way down so we get all the details from this bright cloud in the center. Then next up, I can increase the whites slightly without risking overexposure. So let's do that. Okay. And I also want to bring up the blacks just to prevent underexposure here. Due to those changes, we might actually have lost some contrast. So I'm just going to add back some of it with the contrast slider here. All right, and then let's also add a little bit of texture just for that extra sharpness. So that looks pretty good. However, the image still doesn't have that strong of a contrast. But I'm going to fix that right now using local adjustments. In this case, for this image, I just have applied a few graduated filters. And let's work on the sky right away, which is the biggest change here. I want to make the blue part of the sky darker without affecting the mountains and the clouds in the middle part. In this case, I'm going to apply a color range mask. And although we don't have any color in this image, we still can use the gray of the sky to target it. You can see I have added those color tones using the eyedropper tool of the color range mask. And I also have turned up the range all the way I could maybe reduce it a little bit, but let's just go with a safe range right here. And with this color range mask active, I can now safely drop the exposure without affecting the clouds or the mountains. And as I want to have a very strong contrast, I'm dropping the exposure quite dramatically. And at the same time, I want to get rid of the noise and this strange bright line here going through the sky. So let's bring down the texture all the way. We could even increase the clarity here to add some more darkness to the sky. And maybe let's bring down the sharpness. All right, nice. And now we have a really cool looking image with that change. And there are two more gradiated filters for the foreground. On the first one, I just want to add a little bit more texture as well as some clarity. And that's it. Then for the second gradiated filter, I just want to slightly bring down the exposure just like that. And that's already it for the local adjustments. You can see those were really helpful for making this image a lot more interesting. Now let's play around with the colors a little bit. Of course, in a black and white image right now, there aren't any colors, but still we get this black and white mixer panel right here with all the different color tones. You can think of this as luminance sliders 
And the best example would be the blue slider right here. If I bring it down to the left, the sky will get darker as I reduce the luminance of the blue tones here. And that's also exactly what I want to do. Just not that much, only a little bit, just like that. All right, nice. Then in the foreground with those green tones, we mostly have some yellows and some greens. And I could brighten them up slightly by bringing the slider to the right. Just playing around with them, but I don't want to make it too bright. But that looks nice. Then we still have the color grading panel, which is the split toning I mostly use for landscape images. And I also want to use it for this black and white image. And the reason is I want to add a slightly blue color cast to the shadows. Let's just go into the blue range right here. And as you can see, we now have a little bit of color in here. I still want to bring down the saturation since I want this image to be mostly black and white. But this looks really nice. And then we can even change the colors in the calibration tab, which will change the black and white outcome of this image. So if you boost the blue primary saturation, you can see the sky will get even darker. Then we could play around with the green primary hue, making the foreground a little darker this way. Let's add some saturation here. And let's also add a little bit of red primary saturation, just like that. And you can see that's a, that's a minor effect but still, you can use those sliders to play around with the black and white style. All right, then let's head into the effects tab as well. Here, I just want to add a little bit of vignetting, which in my opinion, just always fits nicely with black and white images. Okay, and finally, I'm going into the details tab to sharpen this image. Just like that. Nice. As I said, I'm not using Photoshop. I just want to use the camera raw editor so people can apply the same settings in Lightroom Classic. That means I need to use the camera raw editor as well to get rid of those sensor spots. And for this reason, I'm using the spot removal tool right here. Some of those spots might be a little hard to see. So we can make use of the visualize spot setting and turn it up to make those a little more visible. So let's just paint over them. And now the image should be spot free. So let's turn off the setting. So that's it for this black and white tutorial. I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.